Nazar, one of the one of the big challenges that we have in the upfront patient is digesting and interpreting the Pisces and the COMPARS trial, which was a head-to-head -head non inferiority trial comparing sunitinib to pizopinib. Um, how do you use that information in your own practice to help the practicing oncologist decide whether it's going to be one drug or the other? Sure. I think first I'd like to just add to what Sandy and Martin had uh, mentioned about how to choose therapy and when to, to start therapy in a patient. I think uh, the way I look at it is uh, a patient presenting with advanced disease and primary in situ is uh, different than a patient who had nephrectomy with a curative intent a few years ago and now has a recurring disease. So obviously people who present with advanced disease, that's an aggressive cancer, so they will require therapy. Uh, I'd like to also mention, to add to what was uh, already discussed, the role of metastatectomy surgery is still plays an important role. So some of these patients who have uh, low volume disease uh, in one organ uh, can be uh, managed with surgery before we embark on th uh, therapies, systemic therapies that uh, are obviously costly as well as uh, toxic. So back to your question, Bob, about uh, the, uh, how do we choose between the obviously two good drugs, pazopinib and sinitinib. Uh, uh, the, the two trials that uh, uh, you know tested these two drugs independently, one, uh, the sunitinib was com compared to um, interferon, uh, and the pazopinib was compared to placebo in patients who were either treatment naive or uh, previously treated with cytokines. In these two phase three trials uh, that were conducted separately, the median progression, median progression free survival with pazopinib and with sinitinib was very, very similar, I think, it was around 11 months. So I think that obviously uh, um, we had uh, the idea is, uh, are these two drugs uh, comparable and how do we choose in terms of toxicity? We realized uh, early on when pazopinib, uh, which came later, had actually uh, fewer adverse events in our experience when we, we treated patients at MD Anderson with pazopinib. So it was uh, important to see a, a phase three trial comparing these two agents that are front runners uh, in head to head in the same uh, setting, in the same trial. And this, the COMPARES was the largest phase three trial uh, that recruited 1,110 patients uh, from uh, all the continents. And uh, the primary endpoint for that trial was uh, progression-free survival, and they used a, a non-inferiority uh, design. And the data was uh, clear. Uh, Pazopinib compared to sinitinib was non-inferior, and progression-free survival was uh, basically uh, uh, almost uh, the same. Uh, interestingly, uh, secondary endpoints in the trial looked at uh, quality of life and adverse events, uh, what we refer to as safety. And compared to sinitinib, pazopinib uh, had a differentiated or a uh, different uh, toxicity profile uh, in many spheres. And in the quality of life uh, uh, tools, in 11 out of uh, 16 uh, of these quality of life domains, pazopinib uh, was uh, 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 noted to be better, had a better quality of life than sinitinib. And uh, adverse events, uh, when you look at uh, fatigue, uh, stomatitis, hand foot skin reaction, certainly pazopinib uh, was better than, uh, was in that regard better than sinitinib. So I, the way this data and the subsequent trial, uh, phase two trial, that looked at patient preference uh, uh, as primary endpoint, which was a novel innovative design, uh, asking the patients which of the two drugs they prefer. This was a uh, double-blind uh, trial in 169 patients, looking at taking uh, patients uh, with clear cell RCC, sunitinib or pazopinib in a blinded fashion, and asking the questions after a 24, 24 week or two blocks of treatment, which of the two agents they preferred, the first one or the second one, se by 70 to 22 percent margin, patients picked uh, pazopinib as the preferred agent, mostly due to uh, uh, the perception it caused less fatigue. So this, these two trials uh, in aggregate, uh, I think, uh, uh, certainly had, have put 
uh, pazapanib as, uh, in my opinion, the preferred agent to use. Uh, and again, with a caveat that serotonin was used uh, with the four weeks on, two weeks off schedule, which is the uh, approved schedule when uh, serotonin was uh, uh, approved, given it on a daily basis, four weeks on, two weeks off. So I think uh, there are, you know, obviously questions about is serotonin the best, uh, is this, that schedule of four weeks on, two weeks off the best schedule to use, or uh, would one look at alternative schedule? I'm sure in the course of this discussion we'll have a so chance to discuss, so Martin, discuss let's, that. So let's turn to that.